morning um so this is the fourth book now that i've reviewed um apologies for missing one day um that is due to technical difficulties so we are joined today by richie the dog and toast the cat who have a poorly foot currently because my pets are just extremely accident prone so yeah he's gonna be fine <laughs> um so i thought what book am i going to review for today and then i thought well it it would feel weird to review books and not review one of my absolute favorite authors um, and that is a writer called darren sham now i have been a fan of darren sham since i was 11 and his were the first books that I picked up and was like, right, I'm reading this in one sit until I finish it. Hello, Toast. Yes, thank you. Um, so you can sit here for a little bit. So, yeah, I remember I used to, they had them in my library at school. So I would have been in year seven then. And Richie, that's enough. Apologies, Richie wants to play with his hot dog and so he's going to dive bomb it. Um, yeah, and I used to, I remember I found the first book, I found his Darren Shan series, um, which revolves around the main character is has the author's name, so it's supposed to be a bit autobiographical, but it's all about vampires. And yeah, I remember getting the first book, taking it home from the library, reading it, going back the next day, getting the second book, and so on and so forth, until I read all of them. Now, that series was um, a 12-book series, and they weren't all out when I started reading it. I have a smudge on my glasses. Let's sort that out. Oh, you can see my eyes now. I'm going to look back at this and think, why? <laughs> um, that's better. So, yeah. And so some of those books I did have to wait to come out and I just absolutely loved them um, to the point that when I was at uni, I um, got a train to the next kind of city over um, because he was doing a book signing there for one of his new books and I met him and I have a picture of me meeting him and being extremely starstruck. Um, so yeah absolutely really genuine person is darren shan really cares about his fans um and just really brilliant toast approves as well <laughs> um so i thought i wouldn't review the darren shan saga because it is a little bit young for you um so i thought i would go with the Demon Arter series. Now, he is in his, you know, he is the master of horror, is Darren Shan. And these are definitely a step up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so they do get a bit scary at points. They are based around demons. Um, this is, I want to say, a 10 book series. And I can't remember. I've got all the books. And half of them are holding up my camera. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, there's more than seven. I don't know. Oh, yeah, because that's book eight. It might be eight. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. It's been a while since I read them. Um, I do actually have them all in hardback because I bought them as soon as they came out. And yeah, no, I, I, these are another lot of well-loved and stained books from me doing things like eating sandwiches whilst reading and stuff. So yeah, so the first in the series is called Lord Loss, all right? And because this is hardback, it doesn't have it on the back. The blurb is as follows. The door feels red hot, as though a fire is burning behind it. 
I press an ear to the wood, but there's no crackle, no smoke, just deep, heavy breathing and a curious dripping sound. My hand's on the doorknob. Richie, can you just stop? Thank you. Inside the room, somebody giggles, low, throaty, sadistic. There's a ripping sound, followed by snaps and crunches. My hand turns, the door opens, hell is revealed. When Grubbs Grady first encounters Lord Loss and his evil minions, he learns three things. The world is vicious. Magic is possible. Demons are real. He thinks that he will never again witness such a terrible night of death and darkness. He is wrong. Um, I am going to actually read the first chapter with this one because I want to. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the books, before I get into reading the first chapter, the books... Most, they follow about three different, I think, three different characters. Um, you start off with Grubbs Grady. And what you find is, actually, which I remember just being fascinated with, is so the first book revolves around him. And then the second book revolves around somebody else. And then the third book, somebody else. And then they gradually then like one of the other books will go back to the other person, they intertwine. Um, so you really, it's a really interesting series. So it doesn't just go, here's a story from this person's point of view. This book starts with that and the whole series is gonna go through that. He really um, gets into his characters. And again, it's how they, um, they gradually come together and then intertwine their stories and everything. So it's really, really interesting. And I just love the way these books are written. Um, like I say, it follows demons. Um, there is quite a few bits of gore and horror in there. Um, and you know what? It's been so long since I've read them. I can't fully even remember. I remember bits and pieces, but I can't you know spoilers <laughs> um i really recommend this series though it's a really nice read um it's pretty easy okay again reasonable font size um nice big border um so yeah you i would recommend the books seem kind of hefty but actually they're only 260 odd pages um and obviously i've got the hardbacks so they always look a bit bigger and a bit fancier but they will be in uh, paperbacks now i don't know if our library has any i don't know how libraries are going to work in this current climate um but yeah really really recommend so let's get stuck in <laughs> get yourself comfy So the first chapter is called Rat Guts. Double history on a Wednesday afternoon, total nightmare. A few minutes ago, I would have said I couldn't imagine anything worse. But when there's a knock at the door and it opens and I spot my mum outside, I realise life can always get worse. When a parent turns up at school unexpected, it means one of two things. Either somebody close to you has been seriously injured or died, or you're in trouble. My immediate reaction, please don't let anybody be dead. I think of dad, Gret, uncles, aunts, cousins, it could be any of them. Alive and kicking this morning, now stiff and cold, tongue sticking out, slab of dead meat just waiting to be buried. I remember Gran's funeral, the open coffin, her shining flesh, having to kiss her forehead, the pain, the tears. Please don't let anybody be dead. Please, 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 please. When I see mum's face white with rage, and I know she's here to punish, not comfort. I groan, roll my eyes and mutter under my breath. Bring on the corpses. The head's office. Me, mum and Mr Don Donnellan. Mum's ranting and raving about cigarettes. I've been smoking behind the bike shed oldest cliche in the book she wants to know if the head's aware of this of what the pupils in this school are getting up to 
I feel a bit sorry for Mr. Donnellan. He has to sit there looking like a schoolboy himself, shuffling his feet, saying he didn't know this was going on and he'll launch an investigation and put a quick end to it. Liar. Of course he knew. Every school has a smoking area. I can happily say that ours does not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, that's life. Teachers don't approve, but they turn a blind eye most of the time. That is definitely not true. At least not now. <laughs> okay, right, let's carry on. Um, certain kids smoke. Fact, safer to have them smoking at school than sneaking off the grounds during breaks and lunch. Mum knows that too. She must. She was young once. Like, she's always reminding me. Kids were no different in Mum's time. If she stopped for a minute and thought back, she'd see what bloody embarrassment she's being. I wouldn't mind her having a go at me at home. But you don't march into school and start laying down the law in the headmaster's office. She's out of order. Big time. But it's not like I can tell her, is it? I can't pipe up with, Oi, Mother, you're disgracing us both, so shut your trap. I smirk at the thought, and of course, that's when Mum pauses for the briefest of moments and catches me. What are you grinning at? She roars, and then she's off again. I'm smoking myself into an early grave. The, ch the school's responsible. What sort of freak show is Mr. Donnellan running? Lardy, 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 bloody la, boring. Her rant at school's nothing compared to the one I get at home. Screaming at the top of her lungs, Blue bloody murder. She's going to send me off to boarding school. No, military school. See how I like that. Having to get up at dawn each morning and do a hundred press-ups before breakfast. How does that sound? Is breakfast a fry-up or some cereally yogurty crap? Is my response. And I know the second it's out of my mouth that it's the wrong thing to say. This isn't the time for the famed Grubbs Grady brand of cutting-edge humour. Cue the enraged... Mum fireworks. What do I think I am? Or who do I think I am? Do I know how much they spend on me? What if I get kicked out of school? Then the clincher. The one mums all over the world just love pulling out the hat. Just wait until your father gets home. Dad's not as freaked out as mum. But he's not happy. He tells me how disappointed he is. He've, they've warned me so many times about the dangers of smoking, how it destroys people's lungs and gives them cancer. Smoking's dumb, he says. Um, we're in the kitchen. I haven't been out of it since mum dragged me home from school early, except to go to the toilet. It's disgusting, antisocial and lethal. Why do it, Grubbs? I thought you had more sense. I shrug wordlessly. What's there to say? They're being unfair. Of course, smoking stem. Of course, it gives you cancer. Of course, I shouldn't be doing it. But my friends smoke. It's cool. You get to hang out with cool people at lunch and talk about cool things. But only if you smoke. You can't be in if you're out. And they know that. Yet here they stand, acting all Gestapo, asking me to account for my actions. How long has he been smoking? That's what I want to know. Mum started referring to me in the third person since Dad arrived. I'm beneath direct mentioning. Yes, Dad says. How long, Grubbs? I don't know. Weeks? Months? Longer? A few months, maybe? But only a couple a day. If he says a couple, he means at least five or six, Mum snorts. No, I don't. I shout. I mean a couple. Don't raise your voice at me, Mum rolls back. Easy, Dad begins, but Mum goes on as if he isn't there. Do you think it's clever, filling your lungs with rubbish, killing yourself? We didn't bring you up to watch you give yourself cancer. We don't need this, certainly not this time, not when, enough! Dad shouts, and we both jump. Dad almost never shouts. He usually gets very quiet when he's angry. Now his face is red and he's glaring, but of both of us, not just me. Mum coughs as if she's embarrassed. She sits, brushes her hair back off her face. 
and looks at me with wounded eyes. I hate when she pulls a face like this. It's impossible to look at her straight or argue. I want you to stop, Grubbs. Dad says, back in control now. We're not going to punish you. Mum starts to object, but Dad silences her with a curt wave of his hand. But I want your word that you'll stop. I know it won't be easy. I know your friends will give you a hard time, but this is important. Some things matter more than looking cool. Will you promise, Grubbs? He pauses. Of course, that's if you're able to quit. Of course I am. I'm not, I'm not addicted or anything. Then will you, for your sake, not ours? A shrug, trying to act like it's no big thing, like I was planning to stop anyway. Sure, if you're going to make that much of a fuss about it. Dad smiles. Mum smiles. I smile. Then Gret walks back, walks in the back door and she's smiling too. But it's an evil big sister superior smile. Have we sorted all, all our little problems out yet? She asks, voice high and fake innocent. And I know instantly. Gret grasped me up to mum. She found out I was smoking and she told the cow. As she swishes past, beaming like an angel, I burn fiery holes in the back of her head with my eyes and a single word echoes through my head like the sound of ungodly thunder. Revenge. I love rubbish dumps. <laughs> you can find all sorts of disgusting stuff there. Perfect place to go browsing if you want to get even with your annoying traitor sister. I climb over mounds of garbage and root through black bags and soggy cardboard boxes. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to use or in what fashion. So I wait for inspiration to strike. Then, in a small plastic bag, I find six dead rats. Necks broken, just starting to rot. Excellent. Look out, Gret. Here I come. <coughs> Eating breakfast at the kitchen table, radio turned down low, listening to the noises upstairs, trying not to giggle, waiting for the outburst. Gret's in her shower. She showers at least twice a day before she goes to school and when she gets back. Sometimes she has one before going to bed too. I don't know why anybody would bother to keep themselves so clean. I reckon it's a form of madness. Because she's so obsessed with showering, mum and dad gave her an ensuite bathroom. They figured I wouldn't mind, and I don't. In fact, it's perfect. I wouldn't have been able to pull off my trick if Gret didn't have her own shower with its very own towel rack. The shower goes off, splatters, then drips, then silence. I tense with excitement. I know Gret's routines inside out. She always pulls her towel down off its rack after she's showered, not before. I can hear her footsteps, but I imagine her taking the three or four steps to the towel rack, reaching up, pulling it down, and on cue, screams galore. A shocked single scream to start, then a volley of them, one running into another. I push my bowl of soggy cornflakes aside and prefer prepare myself for the biggest laugh of the year. Mum and Dad are by the sink, discussing the day ahead. They go stiff when they hear the screams and dash towards the stairs, which I can see from where I'm sitting. Gret appears before they reach the stairs, crashes out of her room, screaming, slapping bloody shreds from her arms, tearing them from her hair. She's covered in red. Tao clutched with one hand over her front, even terrified out of her wits, there's no way she's going to come down naked. What's wrong, Mum? She asks. What's happened? Blood! Gret screams. I'm covered in blood. I pull the towel down. I. She stops. She spotted me laughing. I'm doubled over. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Mum turns and looks at me. Dad does too. They're speechless. Gret picks a sticky pink chunk out of her hair slowly this time and studies it what did you put on my towel she asks quietly rat guts a howl pounding the table crying with laughter i got rats at the rubbish dump 
chopped her up <laughs> and I always get sick I'm laughing too much mum stares at me dad stares at me Gret stares at me then you lousy son of a I don't catch the rest of the insult Gret flies down the stairs ahead of it she drops her towel on the way I don't have time to react to that before she's on me slapping and scratching at my face what's wrong Gretelda I get Iggle fending her off calling her by the name she hates she normally calls me Grubitch in response but she's too mad to think of it now scum she shrieks then she lunges at me sharply grabs my jaw jerks my mouth open and tries her hardest to stuff a handful of rat guts down my throat I stop laughing instantly a mouthful of rotten rat guts wasn't part of the grand uber joke get off a roar lashing out wildly mum and dad suddenly recover and shout at the exactly the same time stop that don't hit your sister she's a lunatic i gasp pushing myself away from the steaming gret falling off my chair he's an animal gret sobs picking more chunks of guts from her hair wiping rat blood from her face i realize she's crying serious waterworks and her face is as red as her long straight hair not red from the blood red from anger shame and fear mum picks up the dropped towel makes it to gret wraps it round her dad's just behind them face as dark as death gret picks more strands and loops of rat guts from her hair then howls with anguish they're all over me she yells then throws some of the guts at me you bloody little monster you're the one who's bloody i cackle gret dives from my throat no more dad doesn't raise his to a voice but his tone stops us dead mum's staring at me with open disgust dad's shooting daggers i sense that i'm the only one who sees the funny side of this it was just a joke I mutter defensively before the accusations fly. I hate you, Gret hisses, then bursts into fresh tears and flees dramatically. Cow, Mum says to Dad, freezing me with an ice cold glare. Take Grubitch in hand. I'm going to try and comfort Grit Gritelda. Mum always calls us by given names. She's the one who picked them and is the only person in the world who doesn't see how shud shudderingly awful they are. Mum heads upstairs. Dad sighs, walks to the counter, tears off several sheets of kitchen paper and mops up some of the guts and streaks of blood from the floor. After a couple of silent minutes of this, as I lie uncertainly by my upturned chair, he turns his steely gaze on me. Lots of sharp lines around his mouth and eyes. The sign that he's really angry, even angrier than he is about me smoking. We shouldn't have done that, he says. It, it was funny. No, it wasn't. She deserved it, I cry. She's done worse to me. She told Mum about me smoking. I know it was her. And remember that time she melted my lead soldiers and cut up my comics and... There are some things you should never do. Dad interrupts softly. This was wrong. You invaded your sister's privacy, humiliated her, terrified her, senseless, and the timing. You, he pauses and ends with a fairly weak, upset her greatly. Did she? Can you stop doing that? Thank you. He checks his watch. Get ready for school. Discuss your punishment later. I trudge upstairs miserably, unable to see what all the aggro is about. It was a great joke. I laughed for hours. When I thought of it, I laughed for hours when I thought of it. And all that hard work, chopping the rats up, mixing in some water to keep them fresh and make them gooey, getting up early, sneaking into her bathroom while she was asleep, carefully putting the guts in place wasted. I pass get Gret's room and hear her crying pitifully. Mum whispers softly to her. My stomach gets hard the way it does when I know I've done something bad. 
ignore it. I don't care what they say. I grumble, kicking open the door to my room and tearing off my pyjamas. It was a brilliant joke. That isn't the whole first chapter. Um, yeah. So I, I love Darren Shan's descriptions. They're so interesting and he really gets into the mind of his characters, um, which is another thing I really love about his read, his writing. Um, I always find once that his books start really well and they hook you in and then you just want to keep reading. Um, so yeah, I really recommend. He has got a few other series um, about, he does do some adult fiction as well. Um, I've never been too bothered about that. He does have a zombie series as well, um, which is actually one of the only ones I wasn't that keen on. But all the others, Richie, can you stop itching yourself? All right, just carry on. Uh, um, all his others I really love. And as I say, he's a really lovely person as well. Um, so, yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed um, this change of pace this week whilst I've been reading to you. Um, I could read you a load of others. Um, bits and pieces and everything so yeah i mean if there's any of the stories that any of you have really enjoyed um and would like me to maybe read a little bit more or anything else then please just let me know um but yeah on that note um i hope you have a lovely day and bye <laughs>